Hello and welcome back to Softcore History. My name is Jake Goldman. I'll be your host for today. I'm joined here by my two co-hosts, Rob Fox and Dan Regester. How's it going? What is this? <laughs> it's fun. He's just having fun. I'm bringing the energy. I'm bringing it. Uh, that's usually Dan's job. Yeah. Yeah. Dan's I bring. He doesn't the words, like the amount. The energy. Yeah. Everything. The content. The substance. We just kind of sit here like two farts. And yeah. I mansplain history to you guys. Yeah. That's, that's the premise of the show. Dan, Dan just kind of like riffs. Dan just kind of knows everything about yeah. what's happened throughout time. And then time. Rob just throws in unnecessary quips. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Too much. I'm where the gabbing, a lot of the gabbing really comes from. But yeah, we're a history podcast. Uh, we cover a bunch of stuff. If you haven't heard us before, we talk about the things that are maybe not covered in the history books. You know, the stuff your professors don't talk about. Yeah, you got to, you want to read our shit, you got to go to like, Wikipedia. <laughs> yeah. That's what a commenter said the other day on the YouTube thing, right? It's like, I'm better the catacombs, motherfucker. Oh, dude, that, that guy. was such a weird flex. It's like, cool. cool. Like, get off of Wikipedia and get your ass in the catacombs. <laughs> I guess, man. Like, <laughs> Dan, Dan, I, I, I mean, you don't learn anything inherently just from being in a catacomb. Listen, I played mm. Assassin's Creed 2 as well, and I've been in those catacombs I blame, in the video atmosphere. I blame Dan for this comment. Dan won't shoot on location in the catacombs. I'm We've been begging him. <laughs> That's all we talk about. We're yeah. like, if anyone wants to take this podcast seriously, we need to be inside a fucking tunnel full of skulls. Yeah. The Who knows what's down there? He, he, he was talking about the Vatican catacombs, right? Not the Par Parisian ones that people get lost in and die. He, he just must said, he just said catacombs. He didn't Roman. Even he just said Roman. All oh, Roman, then it's the Roman. Very broad. I mean, yeah. in theory, though, couldn't. No, never mind. Anyway. It's I in the description, though. We obviously source Wikipedia. Yes. It's in the name. Soft core. If we were... What do you want? If we were the other kind of core, we'd be Dan. It starts out... The podcast starts out with my wife doing a porno voice. What do you very think talented was... talented mouth, yes. What? Your wife's very talented mouth. Yeah. Yes. I've been told that for years. Well, today we're going to talk about one of my favorite topics of all time. One of my favorite things to do. Setting the bar high. Wander yeah. through the catacombs. No, no. no. That's I'm too it's scared. Fucking, too scared for I, that. that is like a top five worst way for me to die. I feel like he's getting lost in those catacombs in Paris. I want to go in them. I just like, you what know. What would be worse? Getting lost in the catacombs down below Italy or getting lost in like a, a server space? Endless warehouses? Yeah. Cool, like Facebook servers? Yeah. Uh, Where it's just a maze of technology. Oh no! One is a bunch of dead people, and one will probably cause the destruction of all people. So, like, at least in the in the server, you can just start pulling wires. <laughs> Someone will come find right, you. Right? Yeah. <laughs> like, wait, what are you doing? Yeah. If you're dying in a catacomb, I mean, you're already you're where you're supposed to be. It is kind of a weird reminder to be like dying. Down yeah, but there. at least you're yeah. properly buried. Yeah. You did die in a death space. Yeah. Which is efficient, certainly. It is. That's kind of like nice of you to die there. Dare I say green? Very green. Yeah. Very green. People don't understand that uh, hearses actually make up 42% of all carbon emissions from automobiles. I know. I haven't actually thought about how much of a carbon footprint the funeral game is responsible for. Think about the bodies they're cremating down there. Think of all those Costco caskets that don't close. That don't close. <laughs> this has got to be the worst review of any product I've ever read. <laughs> One star, doesn't close, won't refund. I just want to be able to buy it in store, and it's annoying you can only get it online. I, I, like you, I want to throw it in a cart. There's just some, like, if you go to the back right corner, just past the hot dog place. You, yeah. People don't normally go back here, but in Costco, if you go all the way back there, there's usually some lurch-looking motherfucker <laughs> back there. And if you ask him nicely, he'll take you to the cold room where the caskets are. God, he's a bad, I, I, that would just be a fun thing to like film people's reaction to. You just get like a two hundred pack of uh, do, like Doritos lunches, like lunch bag chips, and then like a child's casket. You fill the casket with the Doritos? No, it's just you just you're just buying two things. Oh, it's a one stop shop. Yeah, you get it really everything. is. It's America, man. But yeah, we're gonna be talking about partying. Partying real hard. Oh, sick, bro. Yeah, I love partying. Took my favorite thing, p partying. Partying. Love to party. How do you guys like to party? Uh, I almost wore, wore a Hawaiian shirt tonight. Oh, Should, uh, that's pretty hard partying. Damn parties. Wearing flip-flops. Oh, me too. It's party central, baby. Uh, we so we can actually just kind of uh, monetize that section of the internet. Flip. Oh, Wiki feet. <laughs> the, the feet part. Yeah, God, we got to be all over it by now. 
We just cracked 3,000 subscribers on YouTube. Oh, dude. It's because I'm showing the toes. Oh, we go, we go back, toes yeah. out like here. Ooh. Boom. That's another Ooh. 500 people. If you're on the YouTube, you can see us flexing our toesies. But uh, yeah, this is actually the first party I'm going to talk about is a party that happened in Philly. Is it the bar tab? It's the bar tab. Sick. Philadelphia, September 1787. George Washington, a respected war hero, is about to become one of the most important people in history. The first constitutional convention is coming to a close, and George has just been elected to be the first president of the U.S. He's also two days away from signing what will become possibly the single most important document since the Magna Carta, and probably now, looking back, one of the most important documents of all time as well. What, the U.S. Constitution? Yes. Yeah. Um, now, keep in mind, I still need to do my episode on this, but George Washington orchestrated this entire thing. The bar tab? Yeah, dude. No. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude, he's cool. The fucking, like, he's the puppet master. Yeah. What, what big revelation? Of America. Yeah. All right. Oh, yeah, this, oh, shucks, I don't want to be king act. Yeah. Yeah. All right, George. I don't want to be king. I want to be a god. <laughs> it's kind of cool. Yeah. I mean, you know what my favorite image of him is? The the naked one? The naked statue of George Washington? Where is that? What? I think it's in France. Actually, it's somewhere. You got to look that up. Yeah, there's a naked George W or George Washington. That'd be awesome. It's a naked George W. Bush statue. <laughs> hey guys, <laughs> I pose for this sculptor. But no, it's uh, George Washington. I believe he's like doing a a pose that a lot of occultist followers think is something. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, he's like mm. he's not like naked, naked. It's not like he's full like, hog. Yeah, he's uh he's think- draped. He's draped. Yeah, he's got like a fucking toga on. He's fucking cut too. Dude, by the way. George Washington? Yeah. He's the most cut president we've ever had. I don't think that's true. I think it's true. It's definitely not true. He's the cuttest. He's showing feet. Abe in his day. Okay. His day. Okay. Is he second was behind Abe, Abe? Cut or was he lithe? He was definitely cut because he had to make weight. Yeah. He was. He was like all right. Abe. A lot of people know this. Abe Lincoln used to run in trash bags and spit all day to make weight. Homemade sauna. Yeah, for sure, dude. Did the wrestlers at your school just spit constantly to make weight? Yeah, you gotta get the water out of your system, mm-hmm. dehydrate. <laughs> what? Who? Who likes that sport? Insane people. That's why they're good at it. Like, I mean, that they're just the things you have to do. Every wrestler I knew was fucking nuts. Yeah, it is just. I it's did the best one, skill set to have as a fighter. I did one wrestling practice and I wanted to fucking die. And this is from someone that would do like two days in the Florida heat. Yeah, and it was just like, nope. You guys are sick. I all I'll never forget freshman year of high school. It was just so funny to me. Like everyone recruiting all the sports that no one wanted to do, and then people like going into them like, "Yo, yeah, I play a sport now." And it's like, dude, you're on the fucking cross country team. You just run. You pra- yeah. You your sport is everyone else's practice. <laughs> you would run more wrestling than you would cross country. Absolutely, just to make weight. Not even at practice. No practice started with three hours of running. <laughs> Seriously, like fuck <laughs> all of that. I remember pulling up, up. I pulled up to f- football practice one time, and they were all just pushing around a jeep in the parking lot. And Sweet. I was like, "Cool." Just, yeah, go. wrestling was another one where it yeah. was just like, yeah, it was just like pass. No, I'm good. It sounds terrible. I was also soft. That's why I never did much in football. So, but uh, yeah, George, ready to burn off some steam after a crazy few months, you know. The Constitution is all about few law. years, I would say, really. Yeah. But really, like, the convention's what made a September of 1787. So, like, it's been a real back and forth. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, it's finally all but law. They just got to sign the fucking thing and ratify it. And that means one thing and one thing only, guys. It's time to get housed. Let's go. Uh, so that's what happened with Washington and assorted people, ranging from troops and politicians to friends and family. 55 people in total made their way to the bar, and managed to find themselves in the famous city tavern of Philadelphia. I mean, Philadelphia. this isn't even a party. This is like a private dinner. Oh, it's a party. I know, but it's like 55 people is, I mean, that's just like, that's not a rager. Like, they rage, but that's like, it's not a huge party. Okay, I'll I'll stop the episode. That's fine. Yeah. Uh, next time, invite us to your giant party. Yeah. I'm just saying, it's more of like a, a I don't know. I, you know, it's not like a house party. Like a big, you know, hundred we'll talk plus to people. Bigger, we'll talk about bigger parties I'm not later. Complaining this shit don't about, hold a candle to the Delta Sig house. I'm not complaining about any of that. I'm just saying, like, it really is like a a, a 
large private dinner that just got like wildly out of hand. It did get wildly out of hand. And, you know, a lot of the number, the Those financial. Those are the best dinners. I don't disagree. I'm just saying like there's other parties. Like it's not like a Project X situation. It is literally like a bunch of rich guys get the pet, like rent out the restaurant for the night. And just go. You're absolutely wrong. Ben Franklin came in on a jet ski. <laughs> he did. Off the ramp. I mean, if anyone, yeah. It wasn't really a jet ski. It was more of like a fan propelled uh, scooter. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. nonetheless, and he I landed he in water. He Hamilton in the head. Yeah. He's he got did. five old whores. He, he got so much air on the scooter, though. It was crazy. Even with the gout. But um, yeah, you know, it's really. I did a bunch of calculations, though, on how much they spent and like how much they drank per person. So I have a whole spreadsheet of conversions from. British sterling pounds in 1787 to nice. now. So any question you have for me, I will actually be able to answer. Now, is this did Washington put this on his tab or was this on the federal government's tab? You know, they they don't say. <laughs> they don't say. Probably the federal government. <laughs> that you was actually the, that was actually the zeroth amendment. He had yeah. his own LLC actually. George <laughs> called the United States Treasury. Well, that and George was also uh, a craftsy guy. That's why he cut down that uh, apple tree. Cherry tree. The cherry tree, yeah. Yeah. He did not lie about it, though. So that's cool. Yeah, we will never be completely sure what happened in the tavern that night. The details were hazy at best, considering how much was drunk. This bitch wanted to free the slaves! (laughs) Go! You gay Adams! Uh, However, reports from outside the tavern recall the party lasted all day and well into the night. It didn't allow for anyone to break it up even with the sounds of laughter and breaking glass and furniture being broken were heard throughout the night. That's the true sound of freedom. That is the true sound of freedom. Breaking glasses and couches getting tossed. That's what freedom sounds like. I know. Whatever they're doing now with that movie, truly not the sound of freedom. No. No. What? Yeah, wait. Do they even express what the sound is? No, it's a terrible title. I'm sure the movie's good, but, like, it is an awful title. They've also just done the... (laughs) It's like, I don't, all the, can you believe this? No, like all the shit. No, I don't care about that. I just, the sound of freedom is ma- smashing it up. Yeah. yeah. The sound of freedom. It's just a bunch of like, <laughs> just a bunch of fucking rescued kids from traffic and breaking glass and going bananas out, <laughs> yeah. of, out of what, a Chuck E. Cheese, I guess. That's actually the last 15 minutes of the sound of freedom is those kids just going ham in a Charles Entertainment cheese. Yeah. yeah. No, uh, the sound of freedom is the glug, glug, glug of lighter fluid onto an old couch before it gets lit on fire after a basketball win. Basketball? Football, too. Yeah. But I feel like, I feel like Davidson kind of reminds me. I, I just think of like when Davidson was in. They, it was they West could, Virginia. But yeah. West Virginia is the couch burner. Actually, noted. no. You know who was a real, good, a real good riot school? Ohio. Uh, Dayton. Dayton, not Davidson, Dayton. That's who yes. I'm thinking of. When they went on their run, oh my, oh my God. God every time, every win. OB yeah. straight topping. A dude, flipped cars, burned couches, structural I, damage to homes. I'll tell you what, man. Dayton was one of the schools I was considering going to, and that college, that town sucks, but that college is so awesome. Like, that, that is, if I had to pick another one out of the schools I was looking at, Dayton would have been it. Dayton, you were looking at Dayton? Yeah, it's the private. Midwest pool of schools is just so different. It's a private Catholic school in the Midwest, uh, and I went to a private Catholic high school. Were you looking at like Villanova and shit too? Marquette, Marquette, yeah, great and dental Loyola, school, Sh- Loyola Chicago, great dental school at Marquette. Everyone I had no that. chance to go to the main line. Nova, take, I mean, Nova, don't take Nova is a lot harder to get into than like Marquette or Dayton. I couldn't tell you how good any of those schools are. All we know is one group in the schools down south. It's the SEC, brother. And if you can't get into the one you want, you go to Auburn. <laughs> That's not a bad backup. It's not a good one. You feel fun. It's it's fun. Yeah, it's cool. It's not called the planes because it's like planes. It's called the planes because it's boring. Like it's plain. But how can there's a college there? It's college bars. Yeah. What, what do you need it's, to do? What fucking? All right, we're not taking unnecessary dumb shots at Auburn. Uh, yeah. Okay. I have really nothing to defend or go against Auburn. So. Oh, well. Visit. I don't think you either. It just strikes me oh, as... Oh, I do. It just strikes me as fine. We're not talking about, like, Mississippi State here. Seems like you're being vindictive. I am. Anyway, uh, one person reported seeing a never-ending run of servants bringing more and more things to drink as the night went on. So they just kind of had, like, this group of, I guess, bellboys just running booze in because they kept running out. Uh, the party also included an additional 15 members of sorted servers, musicians. Do you think they had a guy that was a part of the group... 
that they constantly sent on beer runs because he was a bad hang? Probably. There's like just one John Hancock. No, Hancock was dope, dude. He yeah, was like Hancock a smuggler fucked. and shit. They wanted Hamilton to be the guy, but Hamilton was such an insistent dick that he stuck around. You know what I mean? Like, no, send fucking... Like, Hamilton is the guy everyone hates. Send Thomas Paine, Yeah, man. but there's one guy that everyone hates more than Hamilton, and Hamilton knows that, and he picks on that guy all the time. Yeah, he's the guy that's just worse than the worst, just slightly less worse than the worst right, guy. Right, because he, like, maybe can, like, get chicks or something. So you're like, ah, well, at least he brings chicks. He's got a good, like, fuck pot hookup. Yeah, I fucking hate that guy. Yeah. But then there's the other guy who is just, like, useless. It's and, Come on, And man. Hamilton's so mean to him. Yeah. It's like you almost kind of feel for him if he wasn't the worst guy. <laughs> well, yeah, you start to feel bad. But it's then like, man, he, maybe then Hamilton like, is the worst. But then he walks up and he st- talks to you and you're just like, get the fuck away from me! <laughs> yeah. I hate you! It's like the guy that you're talking to, like, a group of girls in the house and he comes up and just drops a non sequitur about something totally lame. It's like, yeah. oh, man, yeah. Skyrim was crazy. Even Skyrim, like, I don't even know. Not it's even like that. A, yeah. drops an inside joke that you, no one finds funny, but he's, like, trying to, like, make a girl, the girls laugh. And you're just like, God damn it. There's plenty of those people that I try to be nice to, and they actively just make me want to just dunk on them. Hmm. Yeah. It's not, uh, like, I don't want to bully you, man. You're, you're making it impossible. Yeah. The best example that everyone would know is, like, Gail the Snail from It's Always Sunny. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You gotta solder. Yeah. What's, what's up? What's up? You fucking bitches? <laughs> do some drugs? <sighs> <sighs> yeah. Ah! Nah, actually, there's one kid in college who's like, yeah, I smoke weed before I work out because, like, it makes me lift harder. I'm that like, kid was Jake. It was not me. <laughs> I'm not the guy that wants all the weight above my face when I'm high. But I just remember being like, getting Ooh. high for arm day is actually pretty good. Oh, sure, but, like, it's also... Glamour muscles, I know. B- but also, like... No compound lifts, no danger. I'm not... That's not what I'm going to say. <laughs> I'm also... Keep say. interrupting him with his little workout tidbits. <laughs> <laughs> what I was going to say is that you don't just go up and say that unprovoked to a group of people. <laughs> yeah, you just walk up like, dude, I drank 20 40s last night. <laughs> that's cool, you idiot. You're just like, Die! <laughs> anyway, anyone that brags about how much they drink too, especially at our age, at our age, at our age, it's stupid, pathetic. It's, seriously, die. Yeah, <laughs> like, but even in college, like, dude, I drank like fucking eight shots of Jameson, and I had like twenty nineties, and it's just like, cool, man. Oh boy, why didn't you get alcohol poisoning? I'm not saying like questioning the science. No, I'm, like, oh, just, I'm just sick. wishing that that happened to you. Yeah, the the best response is always that was like you're keeping count. I know. <laughs> I, I was at a party in Austin, awesome, like a year or two after I moved here, and some dude, some like adult dude who was I guess mid to late twenties, was like, I, I'll never forget it. He was like, Yeah, dude, I had like fucking, oh, fucking like twelve bushes last night, a couple shots for loco, and I was just like, <laughs> for loco. I was just like, dude, you're fucking like. 26. Which is hilarious that we're making fun of this because the entire episode is based on how much they consumed. Oh, it yeah. is. <laughs> they counted. They Well, I counted. So it's really the most American thing you can do. Yeah. yeah. Keep track. Yeah. And and pay a lot. But yeah, um, again, there are some other people there like servers and musicians. And then there were women companions as well in the establishment. Whores? I don't think uh, Abigail Adams It was there. not prostitutes, actually. They refer to... This might be whitewashed, so bear with me, but they refer to them as, like, party hosts or, like, party girls. Yeah, what do they call uh, the chicks that show uh, football recruits around campus? Hosts. Yeah, they're hosts. Huh. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Well, no one is certain what happened within the walls of the city tavern. What did survive was the bar tab. Preserved for some reason i don't know why is it framed in like a bar in philly it is somewhere like i know it's in, i think it's in a national archive yeah, actually. forget stealing the declaration of independence stealing the founding the framer bar tab or whatever uh-huh. the, the founding father bar Have tab it on set that'd be sick yeah actually that would be cool that would be basically the ultimate prop for us so if you're a listener and you're a real psycho <laughs> go steal it if you're doing like a side quest maybe get the liberty bell as well that's a much bigger get <laughs> Yeah, we'll replace was, the wait. footstool with the Liberty Bell. Didn't we also ask people to steal something from like Cornell? Wasn't there something in some college we yep. wanted to steal? Who could remember though? I can't, but I know it's Just there. Just listen to the archives. Yeah, yeah. Go back and tell us. What did we, we want know. you to steal along with this? Thanks. We're going on three years, so 
Oh, yeah. So this bar tab actually does exist. It's in the National Archive, and we have a pretty good idea of just how much was drank, how much was spent, and the total damage in U.S. dollars that was spent today. So by the end of the night, Washington's party drank 54 bottles of Madeira wine. Do you have like an uh, ounceage or milliliters on that? Um, so actually, to do the math, I had to standardize what... So bottles, interestingly enough, weren't... I mean, not interestingly enough, it's pretty obvious why. They weren't standardized yet. Right. Yeah, so any bottles from that time were between 25 and 40 ounces. Okay. So every bottle I refer to, like if I say like a bottle of beer, I'm not talking about a 12-ounce beer. Not talking about this. I'm yeah. talking about like a big-ass jug of it, like a, a... What do you take to a growler? Like a growler, yeah. Like yeah. a growler or like a... There's so many different dumb words for bottles I read today that, but yeah. It was like one of those things a with three a X's on a of, fucking, yeah. yeah, a jug. But uh, yeah, so 54 bottles of Madeira wine, 60 bottles of Clorette, 8 bottles of Old Stock whiskey, 22 bottles of Porter Ale, 8 bottles of hard cider, 12 jugs of beer, and 7 bowls of punch. Is the punch just fruit juice? No. Okay. They're not, we'll get to not the a punch. mixer. <laughs> we'll get to the punch. Oh, fuck yeah. Uh, the bill also includes a tab for broken glasses, garnish for drinks, and uh, booze and food for the entertainers. The final bill came out to 89 pounds sterling, which today would be between twenty nine dollars and $32,000. Okay. Ain't no dang. That's really not that bad. No, that's, 55 people at this party? 55. Yeah. And that's a reasonable bill. That's That's a wedding. It is. It they is had a, wedding. a wedding. Um, but I am going to go over some open little, bar. What did you say? What was the total? The total uh, that I got to was thirty two thousand seven hundred and forty four dollars and ninety five cents. Okay. I would say my wedding for the bar and stuff like that. Yeah, tell us how rich you are. Bar, <laughs> food. I I I don't know. Uh, probably venue is ten, probably, probably the ten grand. I would say maybe for the bar and food. Yeah, so, I was about to say venue is probably the most expensive thing about your wedding. Venue and floral, floral. Yep, floral is definitely not. It's always that's more expensive. They, that's where they get you. They always do with like, the you fucking. You this for free, you bitch. <laughs> what do you? Um, but I've been I've been to other weddings at a bed. Like there's, I uh, there's a wedding in my family that was a uh, seven figure tab. Yeah, and dude. it was I and there was like a lot of wine from like Napa and shit. So I assume they were p dropping founding fathers numbers I'm on sorry, that seven shit. figure tab. Yeah, Se wait, like a million dollar bar tab? No, it was a million dollar for the wedding. wedding? Oh, yeah. the wedding. Yeah, what you've been to a wedding that you think cost a no, million no. dollars in his family? <laughs> yeah. What What are you doing here? <laughs> Why are you podcasting? Yeah, get off the set. They're we're we're taking your cut, you bitch. <laughs> like, <laughs> hey, call you. up. This is like an uncle in California who's oh, in oil. An uncle. <laughs> That's like one over from your dad. Oh, the, is it the dude that wrote Full House or whatever? No, 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 no. No. Uh, the, that, that, that's my mom's side of the family. You have a. Ah! Yeah, there's so much to unpack. What are you doing? Here. Yeah. What are you doing here? Go be a scab. Yeah, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Go get a job in the things. Oh, my God. Anyway, I just like, hey, I just like slumming it with you guys. Okay. So of the things I listed, and I can list them again. What do you think was the most expensive line item? Well, per bottle or total? Ooh, that's a good question, Rob. Because, I mean, there was a ton of Madeira wine. There was a ton of Madeira wine. So I would th say that might be the favorite. That sounded, or the most expensive. That sounded like it was the most. The, the Claret was the most per bottle. Okay. It was a, it was a Bordeaux. Okay. Like, yeah. I don't know what that is. I mean, um, I know what a Bordeaux it, is, but How aged Claret was if it? They were from fr they were from France. So. Sick. So uh, the this most expensive from fifteen twelve. I I don't know, man. But like the fact that it was across the ocean meant it probably cost a lot more than it should have anyway. So many people but died I mean, like, for that bottle. <laughs> but I mean, like today it would be about one hundred and twelve dollars a bottle, which okay. isn't that bad, really. No, um, spend that at Lonesome Dove. That was we, the other thing I was going to say. Mean, if you took fifty five people to Lonesome Dove, you would spend thirty thousand dollars. You would spend way more than thirty thousand dollars. <laughs> You'd be sp spending closer to seven figs. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Six people. That were modestly eating and drinking dropped about twenty five hundred dollars at that place. All right, so yeah, so extrapolate that out like six times ten, basically. <laughs> yeah, it, it can get out of hand there really quick. But also, yeah. like I, I like to think about this too. In a way, you got to think of how cheap booze was at this time. Booze was cheap. Yeah, really cheap. So uh, if you think about it this way, uh, the eight bottles of old stock whiskey, which is like. Uh, 
imperial whiskey basically it's really good um it is is it like pretty local though no it's like british like, oh okay, okay yeah it is a uh, hundred and ten dollars a bottle and this is like some of the fine finest whiskey yeah. okay so like when you're talking about like one ten, like we don't inflate we haven't inflated like uh luxury goods yet you're drinking it neat What's up? There's no ice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> For sure. Yeah, definitely. Um, so, but all, all, yeah, you're right. I mean, there's no, they, they are kind of, I, I would imagine that they're not getting like insanely marked up the no. way like luxury brands just are like, um, 600. Yeah, no, we, you know, like, oh, it's a Glenfiddich, uh, fucking 2009. Yeah, $600. Well, yeah, luxury goods cost. The price they do because people are willing to pay that price for them right they're not worth that much yeah like oh like diamonds yeah exactly like a lot of these so a lot of these things haven't like hyper inflated for the gross like not for the gross for the growth of like exponential wealth right in the later half of the 20th century right, right. so the second there's a tie for second highest line item and it one is the 54 bottles of Madeira wine the other is for relishes and olives. Uh, you know, wait, 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 relish, relishes. So I got to imagine that's like either it's food or it's like some sort of like garnish name that we don't know. Yeah. No, you relish in the time you had there. You relish Which in the time priceless. you had the olives. You can't, you can't put a price, can't put a price on, on it. On it. Yeah. yeah. And, and olives are also, it's luxury good. Can't really put a price on it. So how also, much do olives kind of suck? Ah, right, fuck you. I don't olive like oil, good. Olives, not a fan. I'm not a fan of olives either. Oh my god, you guys are white. If you get black olives on a pizza, I'll murder you. Bleh. I'll eat it, but I'm not happy about I'm it. I'm fucking furious. Hey, you know what I want on my pizza? Uh, just something that looks like a bunch of bugs. They don't look like bugs. What are you just talking? A bunch about? of dead beetles on my pizza. What are you really talking like? about? They look, make this. It makes a pizza look disgusting. They don't taste good. You're wrong. It's this is dumb. You're telling me right now. You're in ancient Egypt. You want to eat? A, like a like a beetle pizza no i'd probably pick it off what are they and then be executed for being a witch yeah yeah they'd be like why won't you eat the beetles of yeah. life what do you fear uh but yeah so the second the tie was between the bottles so this is 54 bottles of madeira and then olives and the olive bill came to five thousand eight hundred ninety nine dollars and ninety nine cents too high lord it's too much. Five grand on olives? Big Big they weren't even drinking that much. <laughs> yeah, big martini crowd. Or I, There wasn't anything to make martinis with. No, Yeah, what? No vodka, no gin, no vermouth, right? No. Nothing. No, none of it. Wine and whiskey. The, yeah, what are you putting the olives in? You just, is it just bar food? Like pretzels? Like you're just I, I'm eating thinking, olives? I'm thinking it's bar food. Yeah, relishes and olives makes me think like little gergen pickles. I like think that's got to be what it is. Yeah. 100% that's what that's, it is. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Peter food, my guy. So they just... Eight five thousand dollars worth of gherkins and olives, <laughs> dude. Can you, I, they talk about. Can you uh, imagine the breath of these people, <laughs> dude? It's You're just one of these hosts. So bad. You're one of these hosts, and Thomas Jefferson walks up to you, he's like, "Hey, how's it going? I pretty much made up freedom. You want a bang?" <laughs> Georgie's teeth falling out. Yeah, he's just popping gherkins back in their place, breathing fire, just <sighs> right into your face. So hot. To say nothing of the diarrhea. Afterwards, uh, I'm actually kind of surprised. Uh, the broken glass bill was only three hundred dollars, so they weren't break, breaking too much glass. Did they bring in portable outhouses? That's got to be another question. That that place has to be a piss torium, dude. Like, you just think walk about, out around back and pee I mean, on the could, side. Yeah, right? people. Yeah, just, who's shitting? Oh, somebody's shitting somewhere for ben sure. Ben Franklin's but. shitting. Ben Franklin's dropping a deuce that clears Dude, the. Ben fucking Franklin room. is like shitting in the spittoon. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. Um, hey guys, look. About ten percent of the bill was the entertainment, so like the people playing music, stuff like that, the girls hanging out, um, and they got them meals too. They also got them like another so odd, so many odd bottles of wine and things like that to drink. Well, you don't want your hosts to be sober. Um, but so the seven bowls of punch. It's an interesting thing mm. because Is someone. In a corner in the trash can with the trash cans stirring whatever colonial jungle juice is. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, the interesting thing about it specifically, though, is that it was George's wife, Martha, that made the recipe for it. Sick. 
So uh, apparently she made a really strong recipe of a rum-based punch that tasted great and, according to people, could strip the pain off of a wall. Let's Martha, you dirty girl. <laughs> uh, George apparently loved it so much he always had a serving dish of it in his office whenever he needed a ladle or two. So he always had this hunch punch just chilling He's in his like, office. God, I just need some... <laughs> you just unwinding with jungle juice. You just have a jug of it <laughs> in your fridge at all times. Yeah. What a nightmare. Dude. That's how our country ran. Yeah. That's how it ran. That's the thing now. Like, if you think, like, oh, he's such an alcoholic today. Not even close. You don't understand. George Washington is keeping a fucking pitcher of jungle juice. I think we need an alcoholic president to bring us back. Who was the last, do you think? George Bush. George W. Not in office. No, because he, he wasn't in office, though. He got was sober, it? didn't he? Yeah, he'd been sober by the time All he got All these presidents office. get JFK? sober. JFK? JFK, probably. Um, I doubt Jimmy Carter. Oh, Nixon tried to order a nuclear strike while drunk. On who? I think either the Soviets or China. Fucking what? So Nixon is after after Kennedy, so Nixon's the guy right now. I don't know about Ford. Clinton probably. Definitely not Jimmy Carter. Clinton, no one knows for sure. Yeah, but I wouldn't be surprised. Definitely not Reagan. No. Definitely not Reagan. Not definitely Re not H. W. Bush. No. Reagan was probably doing drugs on the side. No. Nah, Behind think Nancy's back. Do you think he just resented the Just Say No campaign? Yes. It was a cover. He definitely... They were doing it in plain sight. He's definitely done blow before. Well, she was the throat goat. According to uh, Hollywood lore, yes, you are correct, Dan. She is the throat goat. I think the last confirmed alcoholic president was Nixon. That's awesome. Who, by the way, he gets... The Watergate stuff is really bad, but, like, pretty decent track record as president prior to that. He wasn't the worst. Like, no. He, it, I mean, he just, he did something very illegal. Right. And that's bad. But he had, a, he did a lot of like pretty impressive things. He also said one of the things I agree with the most of any president, which was uh, the president's just there for foreign policy. The country can run itself. I mean, to a large degree, it's not a stretch by any imagination. Like it's not, it, I mean, yeah, like the country is kind of run internally and domestically in local levels too. Yeah. yeah. I mean like obviously federal agencies and stuff like that do a lot, but yeah, I, I mean, that's, that's a good point. Like he definitely opened the door to China for us too, which is like, yeah, a big deal. I mean, it might not have, you it, know, time it, will it tell. It was a nice, I mean, it was a big deal of time too, because it kind of put a wedge between the Soviets and China. Yeah. Which was huge for the time. Tact wise, it's smart, but like time will tell economically speaking, you know? Yeah. It's still, we're still bearing it out. Although yeah. people had to continue that down that road. Oh, for sure. I mean like, I think I don't know that he necessarily intended for all of our production to move over to China. No, I don't think a lot of people did. But yeah. you know, so it goes. Do you think Jefferson practiced isolationism so he didn't have to do his job? Yes. Hmm. He's nice. Kind of lazy. Like he was Jefferson's the type of guy to like think of like a creative friend, you know, that like likes to get three quarters of the way. An idea guy. Yeah, he's an idea guy. You know, he likes to like dream. He's a dreamer. Uh, he's not a doer. I, dreamers drive me insane. <laughs> Um, yeah. Now, granted, he got the Louisiana Purchase and shit, so. Hey, that's a win. Land. Got himself a good deal. Yeah. Hey, what do we say here? Acquired land makes you a good president. So, I want to say, well, we came up, we figured this out the other day, but we essentially acquired three-fourths of the land in this country for $45 million. Steel. $45 million. That's how much Max Scherzer made this year. He yep. just got traded. He did. Um, so... We talked about this. Now, now that we're talking about money, like 32K, not a big deal. I mean, shit, like Vince Young probably dropped that at his fucking steakhouse after his signing bonus. No, he was a cheesecake, cheesecake factory. factory. Yeah. Oh, cheesecake factory, that's right. Yes. Yeah. But uh, he had to sell the rights to his name for a steakhouse so he could afford his cheesecake factory yeah. habit. And buying out Southwest Lights so yes. he could turn it into a private plane. Yes, of course. Rookie of the year. Yeah, great, great call. Welcome. That's why you need a good rep. <laughs> To not let everyone get their hands in your pocket. I I think Texas still feels a lot of guilt that they sent that man out into the world so ill-equipped for it. Dude, yeah. I mean, straight up, like, that's the one... Th the thing that I'm scared of the most for NIL is, like, these kids are going to get fucked. These 19-year-olds... I know, and every time a coach says that, they're like, dude, you're putting them into some big adult situations very quickly. And everyone every, like, gets mad. Every fucking, like, liberal little twee sports writer is like... Ah! you don't want you to get paid. I hate you. And they're like, dude, it's just, they're just saying that like these kids don't know how to fuck with that much money. 
yeah, like one of the main courses for these kids needs to be like one financial, just some oh sort of financial God. responsibility classes, and two, like not everyone in your neighborhood gets something. Dude, what's wrong with you guys? Fuck that. See these kids blow their life up. <laughs> Just add that fold. Yeah. Like just because however much money you have, say a kid gets a million dollars, right? That means he is then allowed to go into like, to take out like 10 X that debt basically. Right. Yeah. Pretty much get that black card. Little, it's a little weight right. to it. So however much money cash you get, you are allowed to dig yourself a deeper hole. If I was in college and someone gave me a check for a million dollars and said, whatever, just have it. Taxes are already covered. Like, is, you know. is seven Also, exactly. the taxes need are going to be really weird. Although maybe they'll get creative. Like that couple who uh, got the cashback rewards on their credit card, they bought, I, I think they could build, they had like seven figures in credit. Yeah, yeah they no, bought we, the money orders. They just took, tore, they maxed out their credit cards, bought the money orders, paid off the credit cards immediately, and then got like two hundred fifty thousand dollars in rewards cash immediately, and just kept doing that over and over again. Yeah, what? Yeah, that was a loophole. Yeah, and they the, the, the credit cards finally caught them, sued them, but then they were proven like there was not nothing that said they couldn't. There was nothing that said they couldn't do it. Yeah. So they got away with it. It's like That's, the guy who spent $100,000, I think it was on United flights. It was like unlimited United yeah. flights for the rest of his life. In and, like 94. Um, yeah. And like he's, he's, he flies to like France for lunch. Yeah. It's insane. And they can't stop him. Yeah, they, they can't, <laughs> it's, I think he's racked up like, I, God, I don't know the figure off the top of my head, but it's well into the millions. Like of, That's glorious. But also for that one dude, there's like, a hundred people that also got that deal, you right. never fucking hear about. These are true yeah. trailblazers. Yeah. Because for every one of those, you have the NBA signing people <laughs> who have no idea what credit scores are up for a, a replacement jersey. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. But Oh, the jersey insurance is the most predatory oh, thing I've ever... It's worse than payday loans, man. It's. I just wanted to, like, scream at the television, like... <laughs> Honestly, it's like, you're robbing black people. Like, that's, I just, that's what I wanted to scream. Children and black people. It's like, you're fucking robbing right now. Dude, it's not just black folks. I it's, know it's yeah, not, but, but it just felt, for me, for whatever reason, it, I just reflexively just felt. Like, you're, just you're, you're, you're robbing poor people. Yeah. Like, that's for, that's for it, certain. It just reflexively felt um, like that in particular. It really is all poor yeah. people and, and morons that they're robbing. Yeah, it, but it's. Like that came out of like a Halliburton think tank. Oh my! Like they God. were just like, "Hey, let's take five. What's something evil we can think of?" Hey, <laughs> hey, I've been kicking this around for a while, but what if? <laughs> we just you know how guys get traded? <laughs> like it I, really is kind of like a pickle when you have you just bought a brand new jersey for like a hundred and twenty bucks, and then your guy gets traded. So yeah. this is moron I went to <laughs> high school with, and he's he was on Facebook the other day bitching about how he had bought this Kyrie Celtics jersey. <laughs> And he was going to burn it. Yeah. And I was thinking, like, I bet I could steal $10,000 from him for the cost of a new Kyrie jersey. <laughs> so it's fucking evil. It's an <laughs> evil thing. Honestly, we don't talk about, like, evil, evil shit, like, outside of dictators that often. That's, like, little evil, but still it's very so much. It's so cruel. It's, it's like, the but worst in a petty thing. way. You know what I mean? It's, it's the most. It's like benign form of it's or, like pissing or, on someone's door handle every day <laughs> what is it it's like the mundane mundanity of evil is yeah. that it's like yeah. corporate evil it's that's so what it fuck. looks like a lot of the times so it's not just dumping into the hudson you know i couldn't believe that commercial when i saw it <laughs> it was insane i yeah i i'll never forget that either but yeah so back to the bar tap 32k obviously in today's standards it's really not that much for 55 people all in all it comes out to about 635 dollars a person which for a bunch of aristocratic folks that's a drop in the bucket i can you know i could do that at the I right could, place if, if someone's like hey for 635 dollars do you want to party with all the founding fathers I'd be like yeah here you go without question take my money i've i've spent close to that on a meal for my wife and i like i guess per person that would be like 1200 which would be a lot i haven't come that close but um, I've spent you quite. Could do it. It wouldn't be hard. We just go to. I just get more stuff at Lonesome Dove. Basically, yeah. A couple more margaritas. <laughs> just like one more drink. But uh, the drinks per person is the impressive thing. Here. Okay, that's what we're gonna get into right now. Yeah, because it's just a lot lost in translation on the price. Yeah, in the numbers, I'm like 54 bottles of this, 60 bottles of that, eight bottles of this, right? So I did all the conversions based off of an assumption that the highest volume 
that they know of historically at this time was about 40 ounces. The lowest volume is about 25. Okay, before we get to this, what was the potency of this alcohol like? So, that's actually a good question, Dan. I'm glad you bring it up. A lot of people will revert back or uh, refer back to like old time, uh, what do you want, anecdotes of beer being less potent. I would imagine because like our drugs, like our dad's drugs are weaker. Well, his dad's drugs were weaker. It's a safe assumption for like the everyday man's kind of approach to liquor. A lot of it's watered down. Yeah. But for aristocrats in an actual institution, like so a lot of the stuff that you hear about where it's like, oh, it's super weak, that's usually homemade. It's usually super diluted or like, you know, your every man's kind of like beer. Also, a lot of I don't think that tracks for booze the way it does for like weed or L S D or something, because a lot of them we're making it way stronger. Like you think about like moonshiners in the twenties and right. shit like that. But you are, also got to factor in the aristocrat kids who are kind of stealing bottles <laughs> from the liquor cabinet. They're putting filthy brown water in. Yeah, yeah. The <laughs> they're just the normal Philly water. Yeah. Yeah. But um, no. So that's half the Delaware in there. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so like this is probably as potent, or if not more potent. I'm seeing the ale would be seven to eight percent. So that's a strong ale. Strong beer, yeah. Yeah, a porter, I imagine, is even uh, stronger. Is it? I don't know. I actually don't know. A porter, it depends. So, like, that's probably, like, a Guinness, you know? And Guinness was traditionally light. Uh, early London porters in the 1770s, 6.6. 6. That's strong. That's yeah, still that strong. Is. So, for example, I'm drinking, like, I feel like a fairly mid beer. It's a blonde. This is 4.9. Yeah. Typically, the beers we encounter today are about 4 to 5%. ABV and if well, like a typical sort of macro brew light beer like uh, Bud Light or Miller Light or whatever that's four four point five I think yeah um, yeah once you start getting six and up that's when you start getting into into big boy territory absolutely so I had to do I kind of split down the middle I did thirty two and a half ounces is okay. what each bottle is and then I used the basis of wine servings of five ounces beer servings of 12 ounces and a shot is one and a half ounces typically okay so from all of this each person had you fucker you made an ex like an excel sheet is there a real spreadsheet here oh that's glorious yeah no i did look at you i had fun <laughs> <laughs> uh i do too much business these days yeah that's, that's very much this is like your first job bleeding into your second job it is by the way i had to tell i was i had a doctor's point the other day and he was like uh, asking me questions about stuff, and he's like, "How's the sleep going?" I'm like, "Oh, you know, it's all right." He's like, "What are you doing for work?" And I was like, eh, "This," and then I have a second job, and he's like, "Oh, oh, ooh," and I and it, like he just thought he's like, "Oh, this guy's on hard times, two jobs, fucking shit." I bet he's unhealthy as fuck. <laughs> and then I had to be, I had to like, I wait a minute, and I realized from his reaction, I was like, "It's a fun, it's a good second job." Yeah, I'm not, I'm not like picking up hours somewhere because I'm fucked. Like it's a, did it's he did he change his tune? He was like, oh, oh, good. Ooh. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, like second jobs are the silent killer. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I'm gonna go. Uh, Although I would be a little bit fucked without this money at this point, to be honest. Yeah, that's terrifying. Anyway, um, I'm gonna go line by line of what was served to the 55 people, not the stuff that was bought. So there is way more booze bought just in general uh, for the entertainment people too, but we're not gonna include all that. To get a true Fuck number. Them. They didn't sign any constitutions. And I had to figure out what the kind of amount of punch was. So seven bowls of punch. And I, <laughs> like, I looked I looked at how much the bowls of punch cost. And I broke Googling, like average bowl size well, colonial I, Philadelphia. I split the difference of this on um I just made a serving of punch five ounces, like a serving of wine instead of like a shot or okay. a beer. Um and based on the pricing, I figured out that it was about, you know, a certain amount of liquor people were drinking. So, without further ado, how many drinks do you think each person had that night? I'm going to say over under 17 and a half. You're saying over under, se which one? 17 and a half is the over under. I'm saying. Okay, okay, that's fine. Over under 17 and a half. What do you think it is? I'm going to say, because it was a long... Uh, I'll go 15. 15? I'll go the 17 and a half on the dot. They, they, that 17. And you can half. A Dan, drink. Dan is closer. Yeah, that 18th Damn drink, it. they just kind of puked. Uh, it was 20. Fuck. I should have guessed that. It was I, 20 I drinks. I easily put away 20 on a tailgate day. On a tailgate day, for sure. But 
40 cigs, here's 30 beers. Here's what the breakdown is. It would be six glasses of Madeira wine, seven glasses, like it's a fractional close to 20, so forgive me if I'm not exactly on the dot. It'd be just over six glasses of Madeira wine, uh, almost seven glasses of the Bordeaux Claret, uh, three shots of the old stock whiskey, uh, one bottle of porter, a bottle of cider, a bottle of beer, and what is equivalent to a glass of punch. That turned out actually to 20 drinks. Boy. It's a nightmare in your stomach, is what I'm going to say. Uh, you're not even counting the pickles and olives. I'm not even counting the pickles and olives, no. <laughs> but stomach full of pickles <laughs> and rum punch. No, hear me out. Maybe, like a competitive eater eats a salad beforehand mm -hmm. to open up the stomach, mm -hmm. the olives somehow help with the consumption of the alcohol well what my assumption with the olives and the um pickles were electrolytes it, that's actually probably a good call that probably kept them alive right yeah kept them hydrated maybe that's them. where the term pickled comes from what for drunk yeah i, never I mean heard that. you never heard someone's pickled no no oh, that's a good one the southern thing maybe or that boy pickled um I think it's British too, which could also make sense why it's southern. Yeah, yeah, yeah. southern is more Brit more British. Yeah, a lot more loyalists down there. Yeah, yeah. They wanted some help. <laughs> they wanted some help from their old friends. Uh, but yeah, so it's twenty drinks per person on average. So that means some people right. probably didn't, and some people way overdid. I mean, Franklin is. I'm going over twenty, no question. Jefferson over twenty, no question. Why do you I have so much confidence in these men? Franklin? Because Franklin's a, a dirty pig. He's a big boy. He's a pig. I don't understand Jefferson, though. The logic behind that. Uh, Jefferson's a lush. He's a little... Was it, who, again, what does that mean? dainty boy. What does that mean? What is a lush in these times? He's horny and he's drunk. He's a horny it, drunk. Does lush mean horny, too? Yeah. Oh, no. I didn't know that. Yeah, it means both. Fuck. It's just kind of like a... I've referred to myself as a lush. Entire time. I have been. I'm just feeling really lush right now, guys. <laughs> no, it's like, Dude, I'm kind of a lush. boner away. <laughs> I used to say that when I was like 24. Yeah, I'm kind of a lush. <sighs> I mean, and that's why the women walked away. That's probably, probably explained one or two. Um, but yeah, that, and I used to say commiserate because I thought it meant just like, you know, mingle when I was a kid. I was like, oh, I'm just commiserating with the family. Well, and people, I guess, thought I just had a dark sense of humor for, I mean, you know. Could be not totally inaccurate. It probably wasn't. Yeah, honestly. But like, were you I, one of those guys that worked tables at a restaurant, and been like, "Ah, oh, just another day in paradise." Uh, no, I never he had to say that because he was working at the Tommy Bahama restaurant. No, yeah. he, it was uh, Margaritaville actually. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 Just I, another day in paradise. I uh, I worked with a guy that says that said that every day. I asked him how it was going. I was like, oh, oh no, that's never. That means it's not. Yeah. I bet, I bet you you're not in paradise. <laughs> yeah, I bet that's the opposite. <laughs> the other one that was my favorite was like, uh, live in the dream, just not mine. It's like, God. oh. That's fucking grim. Yeah, that's, uh, that, was, that came from someone at the Chive. It's like, yikes. Which, decently fun job, I guess. I don't know. Uh, Maybe not. Not, not after uh, a while. Yeah, that's true. I uh, think Adams was under, and I think Washington was under. You think Washington was under? Well, you Washington know, was a unit. He was a unit, but I feel like he, he's also like kind of stoic. He had opponents' brains and invented cocaine. He invented cocaine? Oh, no, just, right. No, I forgot about that. Yeah. Um, as a group, the founders were known to get after it. Benjamin Franklin's taste for wine may have likely contributed to the gout that gave him fits during the convention that was going on at the time. Uh, you know, there's a uh, famous quote, actually, from him around this time. Uh, he's being carried away from the Hall of Independence, or the Independence Hall, due to his gout, mm -hmm. and a woman asks what they had created. And Frank, Franklin's famous quote is, during him getting carried away from gout, is, uh, we created a republic if you can keep it. So, like, Sick. that's, that's like, something I've seen a lot of people, like, quote Benjamin Franklin yeah. on, where it's, like, a republic if you can keep it. Mm -hmm. No one ever told me he's just got gout foot and just yeah, being, like, just, carried away from like, Independence so Hall. He's so drunk and gouty that they have to carry him in a fucking... You know who the total liability probably was? Who? Madison. You think so? He's a little guy. Yeah. Mm. He probably did not do the majority of this drink. And he maybe had like three or four. They had a couple of thimbles for him. Yeah. I could see that. 
I, I feel like Monroe too. Probably not crushing it. Yeah, probably not. Uh, while all is fun and getting absolutely slammed, George did eventually turn up and sign the Constitution a couple days later. George Washington, our first president, royal fucking booze hound. Cool dude. Um, I have a couple other ones if you want to talk about them. You can dive into another one? Yeah. These are just from across the world that are okay. fun. Uh, hey, give me, give me, we'll get, let's get out of the Western Hemisphere if you got it. Oh, I got two. Okay, cool. Uh, the man Han Quang, the man Han Quang Zi. Uh-oh. Uh, first Sorry, staged Dan. in 1720, the Manchu Han Imperial Feast, Edathon, was ostensibly a 66th birthday party for the Queen Emperor Kang Zi. But it was also an attempt to unify the ruling Manch, uh, I guess Manchus is the Manchuria. Probably, Yeah. yeah. Uh, with China's Han population. So for three days, the banquet's 2,500 guests drank wine and stuffed themselves with as many as 300 different exorbitant dishes and snacks. Along with dumplings, duck, and roast pigs fattened with porridge, the menu also offered a section of more obscure dishes. So wait, the roast pigs fattened with, did they like, um, uh, what's it called when you do it to a goose? Oh, like the, the, you're talking about the foie gras thing? Yeah, they foie gras some pigs, Um, feeding them like sweet porridge. Um, pro- yeah, that's what it sounds like. They probably force fed them or they just, they're pigs. Yeah, they probably ate them willingly. Pig, yeah. yeah. But, uh, honestly, foie gras too, like people talk about that as such an awful thing. And it's like, have you ever had foie gras? Can I be real with you? I have no idea what it is. It's a uh, fattened duck or, uh, Goose. I believe fattened waterfowl liver. But as soon as that comes out of someone's mouth, I just like disassociate foie gras. <laughs> You've probably had it. Oh, look, he did it. Oh, shit. He's gone. He's gone. Yeah. He pulled a Mitch McConnell right here. <laughs> <laughs> what happened to him? Just hypnotized. Yeah. Mitch he pooped his, his pants, pants yeah. dude. That's what happened. He pooped his pants. He pooped Do you his think p- so? Yes. I didn't I didn't hear the audio. Is there a clear audio? That no, sh- but you can't. Like, that's the exact reaction you'd have if you pooped your pants. Right. If a hot liquid, because you know how, I mean, every time you're about to fart and then, like, you feel the hot liquid, like, touch your sphincter and you're like, oh. I got to get out of here. Oh. <laughs> It's yeah, but he didn't. <laughs> he couldn't. He was at the podium. Yeah, but I mean, he didn't. But he didn't hold it. Is what I'm saying. Oh, he's old. Yeah, yeah. He's got a, like that calamari's been out, been there for a while. Yeah. Ugh. And some all these people are like he's having a was an ambient seizure or whatever. And I was like, a he didn't look like he would. Right? No, yeah. He shit his pants. I I I tweeted this. This is Fox's razor. All right. This is what I want to be known for. Fox's razor. <laughs> it's just poop. Do not ascribe to an elderly per. Do not ascribe a medical emergency to an elderly person who has frozen when it can be more uh, easily ascribed to crapping their pants and realizing that they did so. Well, the explanation's no Occam's razor, but I like it. It is an Occam's razor. Every all of those razors are essentially a subset of Occam's razor. Yeah, it's just a straight line. Right. Um, it's Rob's toilet brush. <laughs> Rob's poop knife. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the 32 delicacies, though, are pretty interesting. So a big part of this was like, let's eat weird shit. Uh, these included such culinary oddities as bear paws, camel humps, entire bird's nests. Oh, those, what? <laughs> those crazy rich Asians. <laughs> yeah. Hold uh, on, hold on. I don't want to go back to the... Well, the bear paw, I don't know. It seems like a delicacy-ish. You know what they eat in Alaska? I had to write an article on this early in my days at, click, at a click farm. Uh, um, moose nose jelly. They essentially like. I bet the snout is really easy to like. It's very fatty. Yeah, and they, boils. And you them. essentially like uh, put it in a pan and and like yeah. It's, you liquefy it. It's got a bunch of collagen in it. Yep, I imagine. Yep, yep, yeah. yep, yep, it's probably nest. really good. But yeah, back Seems to right. the bird's nest. Yeah, the bird's nest. I I gotta imagine that's like just all the eggs in one nest and not the sticks. No, no, it's just the salad. Yeah, yeah. Actually, it'd be funny. Like you cook the eggs while the mother watches and then you break the mom's neck and they defeather the mom and, and then you do the uh, succession use bird. the twigs yeah. to kind of scoop it up yeah 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 for sure uh use every part of the nest but i'm not done obviously monkey brains were in this which <laughs> i guess it's not in, i guess it's china not india but it is like when people get mad at Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, the, the number one racist thing is that the they point brains. out is that scene where they eat all the wacky shit. Yeah. And, look, I'm not saying it's totally wrong in that critique, but, like, they did also eat that stuff sometimes. Oh, yeah. All kinds of wild not shit Not sometimes. Like they ate that shit yeah, at Obviously, banquets. monkey brains isn't the, like, like Asian version of, like, Thanksgiving dinner. No. But <laughs> it's not, like, a standard dish. Right. It's, it's a delicacy. 
but a lot of delicacies from back then were things that were just like you can't really get this anywhere and I we figured would, out how to make it i also would eat monkey brains and other ice cream although not i think in temple of doom it was like chilled monkey brains yeah probably not good i don't want I don't want it cold. It's got to be like a, a gazpacho. No, not a gazpacho. I'm sorry. Like a, a soup. It's got to be like a stew or something. Uh, Like menudo? Yeah, it's got to be a thickened kind of yeah. like, yeah. Because menudo is what? Stomach lining? Uh, Macau? It's tripe. Yeah. Yeah. I believe it's tripe. If I'm, if, Flame me in the comments if you want. Uh, The last thing I thought was really interesting from the 32 delicacies, the one that stood out to me the most was leopard fetuses, which gross. What? <laughs> yeah. How many pregnant leopards did they have? Dude, talk about delicacies, right? Like, how do you find these? How do you get the leopard fetuses? That's I, the worst if, if thing I've ever heard of. Hard enough to come by. <laughs> I <laughs> like, know. You got to capture on not only a leopard, but a, like... A uh, that, pregnant leopard. That's that's what got me the most was leopard fetuses because I immediately thought, all right, there's 2,500 people and they're eating for three days. How far does a leopard fetus stretch you? It's got to be like two, three people. Matt, if you're using every part of it, so like... Thigh, are, leg, fucking, I don't know, like, ribs. So, are, and like, like a, a little embryo. Yeah, like, it's got to be, like, probably about just the size of, like, a little quail or something. All right, so let's say it's a pretty far along one. Think about a puppy. Yeah. The like size a of, newborn puppy. That's feeding, like, two folks. Yeah. Like, so it's, what, on a skewer? You're eating it like a fucking quail? Yeah, probably, they just poke yeah. it in the leopard. Yeah. Just kind of take it out. Leopards unharmed. So I'm sorry. How many, so like, how many you gotta leopard think- abortions were performed for this feast? A lot. You got to think it was just leopard murder. Okay, so right. <laughs> so say the leopard didn't go on. Its it was way. it was a turducken situation <laughs> where you just kind of stuffed the food inside the food. Hold on, hold on, talk for a second. Clip this. <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, you have my attention now. I would like to try this. I yeah yeah. Okay, so twenty five hundred people. Next Chinese buffet I'm going to. I'm asking for the leopard fetus. How okay. do you cook it? I think he's. I think it's skewer, open fire, a little salt pepper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If there's 2,500 people and they each want one leopard fetus, say it's one per person, and say you're having the max that a leopard normally has in a litter, which is five, you would need to find 500 pregnant leopards. Right now, what if leopards were actually just all about China? Right, like they're all kind of like a, they're very common, and then the reason they're endangered now. Is because this feast of this feast. Well, I mean, the the Chinese did murder that fucking bird, the sparrow. Yeah, yeah, um, very effectively. So, I mean, they could have been like, "Hey, we're having a big feast in a couple months. Start paying attention to uh, the leopards." Leopards were like squirrels in China at one point. <laughs> <laughs> so many. It's like maybe that was the answer to a bigger problem. It's like it wasn't crazy that they had like that they found five hundred pregnant leopards. It was crazier that they didn't do more. Like there were just so many. Great leopard genocide. Spay and neuter your leopards, folks. But yeah, uh, uh, Chinese restaurants still do uh, Manchu Han inspired feasts today, actually. This became like kind of a tradition of just having opulent feasts. If there is no leopard fetus, then they're not doing it. It's not a real fest. It's not traditional. Yes. Um, We can also talk about the Shah of Iran's $175 million birthday party. Sick. Yeah, in 1971, a multi day banquet was held to celebrate the 2,500th anniversary. Oh, cool Iran? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Western Iran. Uh, cool Iran, yeah. Hot Iran. Yeah, hot Iran. Is Iran's sure. uh, last hurrah here, it sounds like. It is. Yeah. It is the last cool thing they got to do before we ruined it. I always <laughs> see those pictures, just just babes. I it's know. It's gorgeous. It's gorgeous, that place. Tehran looks <sighs> like the coolest place to be at that time in the, like, 60s. And Ben Affleck had to ruin it. Yeah, thanks a lot, dude. So, yeah, the 2500th anniversary of Cyrus the Great's founding of the Persian Empire uh, was kind of fixed onto the Shah of Iran's birthday party. So the elaborate birthday bash was staged in the shadow of the ancient ruins of uh, Persepolis. Or Persepolis? Yeah. Uh, as part of the preparations, the Shah erected an oasis tent city adorned with 20 miles of silk, flew in food, and chefs from France and imported 50,000 songbirds from around the world. The 600 guests who included the Ethiopian emperor, uh, I believe it's is it Haile Selassie, I don't fucking know. Uh, The prince and princess of Monaco, more than 60 other royals and heads of state, dined on roast peacock and quail eggs and sampled 5,000 bottles of vintage champagne. In between meals, they took in firework displays, dance performances, and a parade that featured soldiers costumed as the great armies from Persian history. The celebration was supposed to signify the greatness of the Shah's regime. 
even had it documented in a propaganda film called The Flames of Persia, which, sick flex. Here's my birthday party. I made a propaganda film out oh, of that's it. That's a great title. Flames of Persia. Flames of Persia. Yeah, that's solid. sick. Uh, you know there's Jake Gyllenhaal also in that. Yes. The prequel, yeah. There is a, a weirdly amount of, um, I've seen it online before. I haven't like gone down the rabbit hole, but I do know it's a thing. Is um, sort of like Persian supremacists, like ancient per like you know how like obviously the West essentially takes its sort of spiritual uh, line from Greeks and Romans. Yes. So there is a not insignificant amount of people who believe that the Greeks and Romans were basically dog shit and the Persians were way cooler. Yeah, it wouldn't and the, surprise me. And the Persians were the real ones who were doing all the cool shit in ancient sense. times. And the Greeks and, and Romans were just kind of like stealing it. Uh, wouldn't shock me whatsoever, but you know what else the Greeks and Romans did really well? Brandon. Account things. <laughs> yeah. keep, keep records. Marketing. Yeah. yeah. PR. Yeah. And uh, The Persians, they took over a place. They just allowed them to live. Yeah. Stupid. Dumb. Uh, but yeah, unfortunately, this would be the last grasp or last gasp of Iran's millennia old monarchy by the end of the decade. Uh, this is a funny line here from what I sourced it from, but growing discontentment with his rule saw him overthrown in a revolution. That's a really interesting way to gloss over what probably happened. I mean, sure, there was some discontentment maybe sowed by, you know, some folks in, you know, certain places. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, you know, could be anybody. I would like to hear about the Hussein parties. Oh, dude, the Uday and Kuse parties. Yeah. Oof. That just sounds like some Joffrey Baratheon Yeah, I don't know shit. if you want to hear about those. It was actually probably just a lot of N64 and cocaine. A lot of rappers would go over. Yeah. Yeah. Perform. Just private concerts. Like Tupac. Yeah. Uh, there's the Field of Cloth and Gold, if you want to hear about that. Always. King Henry the the Eighth of England and King Francis the First of France hosted a joint summit in 1520 in a valley near Calais. They were supposed to be uh, nurturing friendly relations between their two nations, but uh, what happened was basically just a flex off between kings. Yeah, well, yeah, it's what they do. Uh, for two and a half weeks, the royals attempted to upstage and outspend one another by hosting a spree of drinking, jousting, and archery and feasting. The banquets featured elaborate tents and pavilions, meat from over 4,000 lambs, calves, and oxen, and fountains that spewed wine. Actually, one of the, uh, the fountains of wine was so big that the servers were in a small canoe. Sick. Just paddling around to serve people <laughs> on the go. edge of it. All right. I love that. That's my favorite thing. It's fantastic. <laughs> it's like, it's. you want to see a fountain of wine? I got you a fountain of wine. We don't do, we don't yeah. do stuff right anymore. No, we don't. I Maximalism. We need it back. Yeah. Oh, the highlight people are, too hum people are too humble. Apparently, the highlight of the bender came near its conclusion when the two royals squared off in an impromptu wrestling match, so they were both pretty drunk and just yeah, decided to fight. Right. Wait, what, how old was Henry VIII for this? Um, He's got to be pretty young. Because he was a fat, useless piece of shit after a while. That's going to work in wrestling for uh, having the weight advantage. That, yeah, he, all, he should have always had the weight. He definitely didn't look like uh, Jonathan Reese Myers. This is 1491 was his birthday. So he's like 29. Okay. He's, he's probably 29. big, but not like obese. He, and he's like Robert Baratheon. Yeah. Like probably did some good, like probably still got some muscle Probably on gassed him. in 30 seconds. <laughs> yeah. But uh, Francis, King Francis the first of France tossed him to the ground pretty quick. And it supposedly, the party was supposedly so price tag heavy. It drained both nations treasuries and the party failed to initiate an era of good feelings. Um, first off, it didn't drain both nations' treasuries. It just it drained couldn't. those guys' bank accounts. It's just those dudes' bank accounts, yep. yes. Because Which is what a nation's treasury yeah. was back then. It's fun to call it that, but yeah, yeah it wasn't. And then um, I guess the last thing I'll talk about, too, if you want to talk about birthday parties, uh, Truman Capote's. Okay. Pass. You don't want to hear about Truman Capote's nah. birthday party? Oh, go ahead. It's quick. So on November 28th, 1966, fresh off the success of his best-selling book, In Cold Blood, Truman Capote hosted a much-publicized black and white ball in the grand ballroom of New York's Plaza Hotel. Uh, it was held in honor of Washington Post publisher Catherine Graham. The soiree brought together what the New York Times called a spectacular group that has, or the most spectacular group that has ever been assembled for a private party. Uh, the 540-person guest list included uh, Frank Sinatra, 
Ralph Ellison, Lauren Bacall, Henry Fonda, Andy Warhol, uh, Italian princess Luciana Pignatelli, and members of the affluent Vanderbilt, Rockefeller, and Astor families. Um, everyone showed up wearing a mask, which Capote decreed could not be removed until midnight, and celebrated with dancing and 450 bottles of vintage Tattinger champagne. Uh, the moment of the night, though, uh, was when author Normal Mailer challenged former U.S. national or sorry Norman Mailer challenged former U.S. National Security Advisor McGeorge Bundy to a fight over the Vietnam War. Sick. Basically, like, if I beat you, you have to stop the Vietnam War. <laughs> Can you imagine that kind of call <laughs> at a party? You're like, hey, to- uh, this guy just fucked me up pretty good. We got to pull out. Pull, pull everyone out. <laughs> Listen, guys, I know it's, it happened at Capote's birthday party, man. You yeah. had to be there. Jumbo, we got we to gotta withdraw. <laughs> well, it was 66, so it wouldn't be Jumbo. Would it, yeah, would, wouldn't it? It would be. 66? Isn't Jumbo LBJ? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, you're right. 66. It wouldn't be Nixon anymore? No, Kennedy. Nixon, was it was Kennedy, then Johnson, then Nixon. Oh, so, I'm sorry, did Man, you don't know dates. I, I have a hard time with uh, dead presidents and then their succeeding vice presidents. So, LBJ got a full four years after Kennedy died? I think LBJ was in office for like six years. He was in office from 63 to 69. Okay. So, so he Jumbo. won one term. Oh, uh, okay, got it. So, yeah, I was about to say, that makes sense. Uh, yeah, I'm not great at dates. You're right. Uh, and then he 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 only, he died like five years later. No, I'm sorry, four years later. He wasn't a healthy dude. Nah, old jumbo. Gotta call it like you see it, I guess. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So uh, that's it for opulent parties and stuff. I mean, I really just wanted to talk about the bar tab, but I got a couple others in there that were fun to just talk about in general. I appreciated the bar tab math. Yeah, the bar tab math. Honestly, once I'd done the spreadsheet, I was like, well, I have to talk about this for a while. So. That's why I did it. What did you guys learn today, though? People just want to escape. People like to party. People don't appreciate the mindset in which they wake up in, and rightfully so. What do you mean? Oh. They want to alter their mind. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, what's the- They're just walking around until, like, 2 o'clock, and they're like, get me out of (laughs) here! I <laughs> I think everyone can agree with that. What's the I think it's a it might be a Sinatra quote. It might be Tony Bennett, but it's, it's like Sinatra. I feel bad for people that don't drink because they know exactly how they're it, gonna feel. I feel bad for the people that don't drink because when they wake up in the morning, that's the best they're gonna feel all day. Yeah. I mean and just to kind of color in my own context on drinking as a national pastime, a lot of people I think as of late, and I think it might have to it might have started around the temperance movement and just gotten worse over time, but we like to paint anyone that uses substance and then slightly abuses them from time to time as an addict. And it gets pretty like, you know, I've started to see stuff on uh, Instagram and so forth. It's like, even one sip of alcohol is bad for you. The and it's like, shut back the, f- the pushback on alcohol these days is fucking insane. Oh, Rob, it like stops the development of uh, muscle growth for 24 hours. Oh, cool. Who gives a shit? Who cares? I'm not like you don't care about kids. Here's so. what here's what most people who are against you, drinking in particular because it's the most common drug. Uh, re, here's their real problem: is that they're they, actors. They for the most part, it's they, Hollywood. Yeah, they and can't. They take, don't know who they really are because yeah. all they do is play characters. <laughs> yeah. No, no, definitely, definitely, that is part of it. They can't take responsibility for their own irresponsibility. It's like like you the fact that you couldn't be responsible with this thing is no one else's problem but you. Stop yelling at the alcohol. You're the asshole. Uh, yeah, I mean, to be <laughs> like, frank, it's the classic uh well, let me take my personal experience and extrapolate it to the entire yes. world in their experience. Yeah. It's pretty self-centered. Um, you know, sure, yeah, alcohol definitely has had times where it's been awful in the country. Like yeah. but True. There's Alcohol does not kill good vibes. Bad vibes kill good vibes. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Is that a bad guys with guns? Kinda. Yeah. Yeah. I saw it on a t-shirt. A good guy. Is that the boardwalk the other yeah. day? Guns don't. A guy with good vibes drinking alcohol kills a guy. <laughs> bad vibes drinking alcohol. Guns don't kill people. Bad vibes kill people. Well. Kinda. Yeah. I mean, to be. We're all about vibes these days. Yeah. Who's Hitler? Um. I, the leopard hunters. <laughs> the leopard genocide? Yeah, the, the leopard abortionists. Yeah, China. <laughs> okay. I mean, that's fair. Good Lord. Hey, 
Thanks so much for listening, y'all. Be sure to check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash softcorehistory. Uh, there you can get two extra episodes a week for a total of eight episodes extra a month at the low cost. I don't even know checks out. You might get more some months. Yeah, some but you might get more. More importantly than even that is that we have an entire massive back catalog on that Patreon. And since this is a history show, it's all evergreen. Yeah. So it's not like, you know... You're going back and listening to us talk about news stories from 2022 or something no, like that. Like, this stuff is so old that it's evergreen. Yeah. It's so old, it's new. There's only one episode in our entire catalog that is not evergreen. We dare you to find it. It's pretty easy to find. Yeah, yeah. It's, the, it's the one that's easy to find. But um, yeah, that's it for our show, guys. Thanks so much. Like and subscribe. Leave a review. Five stars if you can. Tell your friends, too. We need to grow. Please. For Dan or Jester and Rob Fox, I'm Jake Goldman. You just got soft served.